A drip irrigation system can seem intimidating because everybody's garden is different, but let me show you how easy it really is to determine what you'd need for your garden. And if you'd like to follow along, I created this easy to read chart that shows you all the parts that go into a drip system for almost any raised bed garden. Whether you've got tomatoes, peppers, squash, melons, cucumbers, brassicas, leafy greens, root veggies, strawberries, herbs, or flowers, this system will keep them watered evenly all season long. You'll be surprised at how few parts are actually needed to set up a drip irrigation system for your raised bed. In fact, I've counted only eight necessary 100% required parts. I'm going to cover some of the extras that might be beneficial to have, but they're not necessary. That's why I've simplified things down to the eight essential parts. If you get these eight parts, you will have everything essential to a drip irrigation system. But I'm also going to show you a way to make sure that you miss nothing that's essential, that you can guarantee you get exactly every part you need to make a complete drip irrigation system. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to start with is the head assembly. Don't let that term intimidate you. This is really just the parts that you screw right onto your hose bib, and you don't even really have to think about it. They screw right onto your hose bib, no extra adapters are needed. The head assembly consists of four separate parts, but we have it available on our website as a single part. And really, if you can put on a garden hose, you can put together a head assembly because they just screw right onto your hose bib. So you can see here, we have them set up in the recommended order. First is the backflow preventer, and all that does is keep water from the irrigation system from flowing back into the potable water supply in the house. And that's the first thing you're going to screw right onto your faucet. Next, we have the filter. And just like any water filter, it just keeps debris from getting into your irrigation system. Then we have our pressure regulator, which serves two purposes. The most important purpose is that it ensures even uniform watering across the irrigation system because drip irrigation needs to be at a much lower pressure than hose sprayers or sprinklers do. And then finally, we have our hose by tubing adapter, which is a fancy way of saying you screw it on on one side, you connect your mainline tubing to the other. And that's it. If you can connect a garden hose to your outdoor hose bib, you can put together a head assembly. They're about the exact same level of skill required. Next, we have our mainline tubing. For a home garden, this will almost always be one half inch tubing. After the head assembly, you can start running tubing towards your garden. Mainline tubing, you can think of it as distribution tubing. It takes water from your hose bib over to your raised beds. After our mainline tubing, we have our mainline tubing fittings. And fittings are what you put on your mainline tubing to accomplish various tasks. For the essential fitting, you're going to at least need a couple elbows for your raised beds. The elbows turn your mainline tubing 90 degrees, and they're what you'll use to get the tubing going up your bed and then across the top of it. In addition to the elbow, another required fitting is going to be your end cap. And that simply closes off the end of your mainline tubing so that when you put water in there, it pressurizes, it stops right at the end cap. And believe it or not, those are the only required fittings for our mainline tubing. Now, if you have more than one raised bed, you are going to need a T, which just means your mainline tubing can go after it tees off to go to one of your beds, like you see on the diagram here. The fittings we like to use for these systems are called twist and lock or lock style fittings. Now, the reason we like to use these is because they're very easy for first time DIYers. There's no gluing, there's no welding. You simply push the tubing on over the barb and turn the locking nut to secure it in place. As you can see, they secure the tubing just as good as any traditional barbed or compression fitting while being significantly easier to use. Let me demonstrate. First, turn the locking nut all the way back so you fully expose the barb. Then simply push the tubing on over the barb. You can walk it back and forth to get it all the way over. And then you turn the locking nut and it's secure in place. We actually made a video that compares all the different types of fittings you see used in irrigation. And we found, especially for first timers or people who are new to it, that these are the best overall. They're extraordinarily easy to use. They're completely reusable, so it's okay to make mistakes and they're affordable. Then we have our one quarter inch coupling. Our one quarter inch coupling is the part that connects our drip line to our mainline tubing that we ran up over our bed. You make the hole for the barbed coupling with the last part, which I'll show you in a moment. Next up is the one quarter inch drip line. One quarter inch drip line is the part that actually delivers water to your raised beds. It has a hole that has an emitter beneath spaced every 12 inches. And for a three foot wide bed, we use about two lines. For a four foot wide bed, we would use three lines. For a two foot wide bed, like our Drip Depot metal raised beds, you can still use two rows just as well. And then we've got our goof plug. Our goof plug 
acts as an end cap for our quarter inch drip line. Remember the end cap we put on our main line to close off the end, but we need that for our quarter inch drip line as well. And that's the purpose that the goof plug serves. In addition to serving as an end cap for quarter inch drip line, a goof plug has two sides and the bigger end serves a different purpose. If you accidentally punch a hole or make a hole in your mainline tubing, you can fill it up with the bigger end of the goof plug. And then finally, we've got our one quarter inch punch. One quarter inch punch is used to make holes in our mainline so we can push in our one quarter inch coupling. Now, technically this one might not need to be on the required list because we've seen people use drill bits, landscape staples, or anything else of a similar size, but I do recommend the punch because it's guaranteed to make the exact right size hole you need for those quarter inch couplings. And not only is it guaranteed to make the exact right size hole, but it's also designed to be significantly more ergonomic than a tool that is not designed for the job. It's a lot easier on the hands. And that's it. That is the entire list of required items to make a complete drip irrigation system for a raised bed. Now, you're going to need multiples of some of these parts, but still, that's only eight separate parts that you'll need. For example, you're going to require more than one goof plug and more than one one quarter inch coupling if you're going to have more than one row of drip line, which in most radius beds, except perhaps the very narrowest, about a foot wide, are going to call for. If you have more than one bed, you are going to need at least a T, one for every bed that you're teeing off to, as you can see here on the diagram, but that doesn't add much complexity. It's just a T instead of an elbow for each extra bed. Now, this should put things in perspective to some degree that a drip irrigation system doesn't have to be a convoluted, complex, expensive mess that you see in a lot of online guides and videos. It can be a very simple, straightforward system that consists of anywhere from eight to 10 different parts. There are a few inexpensive optional items that I also want to cover today. Now, these are optional. If you want to stop watching here and skip straight to the end to see how we can simplify it even further, definitely do so. But some of these optional parts come in really handy. For example, if you have wooden beds, our one half inch tubing clamp with nail makes it way easier to secure your tubing to the wall of the bed than just trying to let it dangle or hang there. Likewise, our tubing stakes will hold your main line in place as you roll it out. This is particularly handy if your hose bib is some distance from your raised beds, or if it needs to angle or turn a little bit, the stakes hold it down as you unroll it. They also keep the tubing tidy, which may be important to you for aesthetics, but they're not necessary. In fact, a weird phenomenon of tubing is after you lay it out a day or so later, basically when it's been exposed to the sun and it's gone through some thermal expansion and contraction, that tubing is going to hold its space. That's why multiple day projects will actually sometimes reuse the stakes from the previous day the next day, because we can pull those stakes up our tubing holds a shape and we can use it on the new section of the install. Stabilizer stakes for one quarter inch tubing are also nice to keep drippers secured in place and help the emitters stay out of the soil, which can help prevent soil from clogging up the emitters over time. If you have some plants that are just out of the way or like you have some potted plants hanging out around your raised beds, you can use some blank quarter inch tubing. It's very similar to drip line, but it doesn't have any emitters in it yet. It's distribution tubing like your main line. You can use that quarter inch distribution tubing and button drippers to cover your plants that are right out of the way, your potted plants that you have around your raised beds, even if they're a little bit of distance away from the raised bed. Another really nice thing to have, particularly if you have multiple raised beds, are coupling valves. You put these on the main line running up to your bed, and what these do is let you turn off the emitters to that particular bed in case you want to save water on a bed that doesn't need it. Maybe you harvested the bed. This lets you make sure you only water the beds that need it. And finally, if you wanted to automate the entire thing, you can add on a timer. Hose timers have become pretty inexpensive these days. Uh, not inexpensive compared to the other parts, but they're definitely not going to break the bank. And so in most cases, they're really worth it for the convenience they provide and mostly for the time they free up. If you do grab a timer, there's no need to overthink it. All you do is make it the first time you connect to your hose bib and your head assembly. So it goes timer, then backflow preventer, and then the rest of your mainline tubing. And if you really wanted to, we've gone and made all of this even easier by offering everything you see here, including the handy optional items, into our pre-made kits. We have kits available anywhere from two to 10 raised beds, and these kits are guaranteed to contain everything needed to create a complete drip irrigation system. The kits are also fully modifiable. So let's say your hose bib is 100 feet away from your raised beds and the kit comes with 50 feet of mainline tubing. All you have to do is add another 50 feet or change it for a 100 foot roll, which is very easy to do on our website. If you don't want to spend time finding each of these items on our website, that is no problem. We have everything here, including the inexpensive options 
put into our drip irrigation kits for raised beds. And even if you want to remove all the optional items, that's the easiest thing to do. Go to one of our kits, hit the customize button, remove any of the items that you're not absolutely going to need and submit the order just like that. It'll lower the cost of the kit and keep things simple, exactly like we discussed today. Now, if you'd like to learn in depth on how to install these parts, well, it's pretty much just as easy as ordering a kit. Check out the installation guide video right there. It'll walk you through from start to finish. If you'd prefer just to jump right in and get started, you can click right here to get to our drip irrigation kits for raised beds.